And we're welcoming right now here to Accrington Ballroom. It's just a few minutes past six. And we're going to join the Som Day Centenary Concert live here from the ballroom at Accrington Town Hall, hosted by BBC Radio Lancashire's Sally Naden. The Battle of the Somme, fought in northern France, was one of the bloodiest of World War I. For five months, the British and French armies engaged the Germans in a brutal battle on a 15-mile front. A hundred years ago today, the 1st of July, 1916, was the first and bloodiest day. The British soldiers advanced. They were mown down by machine gun and rifle fire. 19,240 British soldiers lost their lives. It was the bloodiest day in the history of the British Army. The campaign wore on for five months, and in all, over one million soldiers died or were wounded on all sides. The Pals March was composed in 1914 for piano by Ralph Sanders. The piano score was archived in Accrington Library, rediscovered, and in early 2013, arranged for the East Lancashire Concert Band by Nick Hone. It was almost certainly written to celebrate the recruitment of the PALS battalions in response to Lord Kitchener's appeal at the outbreak of war. The music reflects the optimistic mood of the time and an exciting adventure that might well be over by Christmas. July 100 years ago, 720 Accrington Pals went into action. 584 became casualties. Private Walter Hutchinson wrote, Then the order came down, dump everything and fix bayonets. You've got to fight for it, lads. <laughs> director Matthew Thomas. The choir was formed in 1977 and has over 40 members, made up of ladies from all age groups and all walks of life. They're about to perform two pieces for us, Wherever You Are, which was written by Paul Miller for the Military Wives. The music is set to a poem compiled from letters to and from the servicemen and their wives on a six-month tour of Afghanistan. And then Remember Me, written by Bob Chilcott from a poem from Cristina Rossetti in response to the tragedy in Norway where 68 young people lost their lives in July 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the ballroom at Accrington Town Hall, live on BBC Radio Lancashire, the Rosendale Ladies Choir.
to my lack of musical contribution, I said that I'd uh, try and raise its profile, and that involved looking into the history. And that um, led us to discover the fact that Dale's just described, in as much as we were the band that led the Accrington Pals at its formation in 1914. We all agree it's very special to have them here performing today, don't we? Let's give them a round of applause again, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> now for the East Lancashire Concert Band to entertain us again and it's a piece of music that will be familiar to many of you. The stories behind this music draw on the diaries and letters of troops who landed in Normandy early on D-Day morning. It reflects the same emotions and comradeship as experienced by the brave men at the Battle of the Somme. Composed in 21 by Michael Kamen from the film of the same name, It's Band of Brothers. writing this when I was in the in uh, north in, uh, in France in the north of France and then I and uh, I had lots of different lines come up and then I came home and I thought about it and I came up with a version and my wife said that's not good enough you can do better as uh, ladies often do as a missus does anyway and then so I uh, I restructured it and I came out with this piece which I'm really proud of actually well, it's time to hear him sing. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Dylan Owen performing Fallen of the Day. I'm a local lad from Accrington and I signed up for the war to fight for king and country though I've never fought before they closed me factory gates last week no wages to be had I'll meet me country's hour of need in order to be fed I'll fight for king and country and be fed and there's a young French girl in a town called Sarah, so the sergeant says. And there's a young French widow in a town called Sarah, so the sergeant says. And Christmas never comes around for me pals who fell away. Oh, the fallen of the day. The fallen of the day. Hartley Barnes of Burnley was born in 1884 and between 1901 and 1912 served in the East Lancashire Regiment. In September 1914, the Burnley newspaper described how he and five of his nine brothers had over 50 years soldiering experience between them, including four currently serving at the front. As a reservist at home until re-enlisting as a sergeant in the Royal Engineers in 1915, William received letters from his brothers, and these form part of the collection which have come to be cared for at Lancashire Archives. Dear Will, just a few lines in answer to your letter, also to thank you for the fags and papers which I received today. Dear Will, it is with deep regret and sorrow that it is my duty to let you know that our Jack 
died of his wounds, which he received on the 6th of November. And he died the same night or early the next morning. It was during a bayonet charge when he got shot in the temple. And our fellows had to retire, as they were getting fired on at the flanks, as well as at the front. And all the wounded had to be left there. They tried to bring the wounded in, but every time they got out of the trenches, the Germans opened or raked fire on them to keep them in. And poor Jack was left there with the rest. And God alone knows what he suffered before he died. Our Tom was in another trench at the time, but as soon as he got to know, he was out of that trench, and he crawled to B-Boy's trench to try to bring Jack back in. But it was no good as he was too near the German lines. And Jack still lies there. I heard on the morning after that he was wounded and taken to hospital. But I suppose the fellow that told me did not like to tell me that he was dead. And it was not till any men got relieved out at trenches three days ago when I saw our Tom that I knew the truth. It gave me a shock, Will, when I knew. As I was hoping Jack was in hospital and getting better. Poor Tom broke down when he were telling me, as they were used to have their meals together. And I can tell you, Will, life in the trenches has fairly altered our Tom. When I met him, I hardly knew him, as he looked that bad. But I'm glad to say he will be all right now, as he's got Master Cook. I suppose he's told you about his two narrow escapes. One being where a shell ripped his valise off his back and smashing everything in it. And the other where he was nearly buried alive. And they pull him out by his scarf when he was nearly gone. You can tell what things are like when Tom was the only NCO left in his platoon when they came out of the trenches. Our fellas have gone in the trenches again and are preparing to stop here for the winter. We were having some very severe weather here now. It snowed a few days ago, and now there's a very hard frost. Dear Will, I've just received a field service card from Sepp, and he says he's quite well. That's the first time I've heard from him. I am very glad to hear that you've got your allotment at last, and all you have to do now is to take it to the post office. Oh, and don't forget to tell him about the back pay you should have had from the 1st of September. As for myself, well, I'm enjoying myself as much as can be expected, so I cannot grumble. And I'm still on the same job and in good health. And I hope yourself, Gertie and family are also in good health. So I think that's all at the present. Again, thanking you for the fags and papers. I remain your sincere brother. It's my pleasure now to introduce a singer-songwriter of rare quality whose international reputation has delighted fans for more than 20 years. Whether it's with his own collection of songs, his covers of much-loved classics, or his simply stunning tribute to the music of John Denver, which we've enjoyed many times here on BBC Radio Lancashire. Well, tonight he's singing something completely different. This song describes war as futile and gruesome, while criticising those who seek to glorify it. It's the story of a young Australian soldier who's maimed at the Battle of Gallipoli during the First World War. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Bannister and the band played Waltzing Matilda. I was a young man, I carried me pack And I lived the free life of the rover From the Murray's Green Basin to the dusty outback I waltzed my Matilda all over Then in 1915, my country said, son It's time to stop rambling, there's work to be done and they gave me a tin hat, and they gave me a gun. 
And they sent me away to the war. And now every April, I sit on me porch. And I watch the parade pass before me. And I see my old comrades, how proudly they march. Reliving old dreams and past glory. And the old men march slowly, all bent, stiff and sore. The tired old men from a forgotten war. And the young people ask, what are they marching for? And I ask myself the same question. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda, who'll go a waltzing Matilda with me? And those ghosts will be heard as they pass by the billabong. Who'll go a waltzing Matilda with me? I'd now like to introduce you to someone who's a friend of BBC Radio Lancashire and a personal friend. He sang to me when I had no hair and was feeling at my least attractive and he made me feel beautiful. He's a lad from Bake Up who was inspired to sing and he's gone from strength to strength. He's a star of the opera world, equally at home in Covent Garden or sporting arenas. His easygoing manner making him a firm favourite with both the opera and rugby fans, and we won't mention the football. Not tonight. With him tonight is a choir that's been brought together because they shared a passion for singing. Formed from Wharton and Salisbury sites only two years ago, please welcome the BAE Systems MAI Choir and the one and only Mr. Sean Ruan. Thank you, Sally, for that wonderful introduction. I'm just going to give you a quick intro about the choir and the two songs they sang. Danny Boy and the Last Rose of Summer were songs that were I suppose, synonymous with World War I. Uh, and both of those were arranged by Alexander Lestrange. When I was asked to sing uh, for, the, for this concert, it, it took me back to when I was at secondary school at St. Theodore's in Burnley when I first heard about the Accrington Cows and how many of the town's men folk were decimated on that day. So when I was trying to think of songs to, to sing, uh, I wanted to do things that were a little bit different. So I have a, a, an eight-year-old son called Gabriel who's, you know, into war things, you know, always dressed up in camouflage and everything else and trying to jump out on me and scare me and all those tricks that eight-year-old boys do. And I came across a song called Dear Little Boy of Mine. And 
I thought, what must it have felt like for those parents, especially those fathers whose sons went off to war and they never came back again? How did it feel for them? So I'd, I'd like to do Dear Little Boy of Mine. Thank you. 